so today we will see like list of all the major programming languages and um, where you could actually use these programming languages and um, what sort of field um, generally you will get into using these programming languages um, so we'll look into it actually this is an interesting topic as well because if you're a game developer uh, if you choose the right programming language uh, you might actually end up being a game developer because that's where that programming language is used most and uh, so similarly if you want to become an iot or um, uh, or a blockchain developer anything of your interest if you study and focus on a specific programming language you generally get into that field much quicker okay let's get into what welcome to expert is academy um, so I hope you like those videos and I'm going to do a lot more civil related videos as well and uh, project management videos and uh, articulate through storyline 360 videos as well um, so yeah, if you guys have any specific things that you want me to go through it uh, just put it into a request and um, we'll see to it okay so before we uh, get started um, let's have a quick introduction about programming languages and uh, with the advent of uh, artificial intelligence now programming languages uh, it's like um, a bit more easier to use it compared to learning it before it used to be like you know you have to learn it and then you have to use it now you can actually get a boilerplate code for any programming language and you can just copy paste it into into your ide which is a developer environment and it can start work straight away and um, and also there is a lot of other things where you can set things up much quicker because previously if you used to build a website you need to have a web server and everything so now uh, it's like a lot more easily uh, deployable and usable um, so being a developer at this stage is like uh, it's like i would say like it's um uh, it's a boon that uh, you can progress much faster okay so first thing programming languages so a lot of people get confused with what is a programming language um, sometimes people say like HTML is a programming language. No, actually HTML is not a programming language. It's called a markup language. And similarly, people say like, um, okay, how about Bash? And uh, how about PowerShell scripting and things like that? Those all are not programming languages because you can still do some sort of structured queries or something like that, uh, but they are scripting languages. Uh, so there is a difference between uh, programming as well as uh, scripting as well. So in this one, uh, let's focus on programming languages. And um, so we're gonna choose programming languages which stays here for, for a long period of time, such as C, uh, C++ to the most to modern languages as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna have a canvas and um, let's keep going with this one. So first one, I'm gonna take, uh, the first one is Java. So who, can study Java and what sort of jobs you will get it and uh, how hard is to study. I have used Java in a few projects and it's similar to C Sharp. I'm basically MCST, I'm a C Sharp developer. So for me it's like uh, Java and C Sharp is sort of equal. So if I write uh, some sort of code, it's C Sharp and it's also similar to Swift as well. Um, pretty much you can copy paste the code and generally uh, the syntax sounds some sort of uh, close to same. Um, but Java is like uh, much more widely used and it's pretty old language and um, the things that you can do is like with the Java is like you can see a lot of uh, legacy enterprise applications will be running on Java and uh, you'll also have a uh, lot of um, games and legacy operating systems such as Symbian, a lot of those OSs and things like that would have been uh, written using Java and uh, big data and desktop application for Windows, Linux, Macintosh, a lot of those things will be done in Java and mobile applications if you use your Android apps. Uh, right now the Android apps have been written using the native ones are using Kotlin and um, the cross-platform ones are basically React Native and Flutter. Uh, but with this um, uh, native, lang native apps you can still write in Java. So Java has been there for, for a while, it's like a pretty, pretty decent one. So uh, most of these programming languages, you don't actually need any certification, and uh, but there is just a Sun certification for Java. I don't know if Sun still exists, uh, but that used to be one where people do it, but it's not necessary. For any programming language that you study, you wanna prove your proficiency is basically build some sample projects, put into GitHub or any other source control like GitLab or GitBucket or something like that, and then uh, pretty much add it to your resume. So yeah, so that's basically uh, Java does. And then the next one, we're gonna go into C++. So C++ is, um, is still widely used and it's got um, a lot more applications uh, of where you can actually use these ones. Say for example, if you play some really, really popular games, 
they use Unreal Engine. So all the top games, all the many Hollywood movies, you would see like very realistic graphics, they use Unreal Game Engine and that uses C++. So if you want to become a game developer, so C++ is the way to go. And not just not that, you will use it on embedded systems. So IOTs, and a lot of system related programming languages and uh, machine level programming mainframes and server level codes and a lot of these things people use C++ um, and most of the graphics intensive um, applications engineering applications mining applications uh, people use uh, C++ because uh, it works much faster in terms of performance they do they do perform better than most of the other languages um, so then we come to Python. So Python is actually a um, pretty cool language to start with. So if you want to study, uh, start learning about programming languages, I would suggest uh, you start with Python. It's a lot easier. And, um, um, and then, you know, you can climb on top of it and then you understand like how a programming language works. Uh, how the syntax and uh, pretty much most of them have, have the uh, if loop, for loop, for each and all of these things are similar to other languages as well. Um, it's widely used, a lot of beginners will start studying these ones. Uh, but Python is also used in a lot of other things such as IoT. Uh, if you have heard of Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi, um, there is like a whole bunch of uh, libraries available uh, for you to try it out using Python code. And um, so yeah, if you guys are actually gonna go into uh, IoT, uh, Python is one way to go. And then computer vision, uh, deep learning, AI. And there are web portions that you can do as well, like websites and stuff like that using a framework called Django. Uh, but you know, there are a lot of um, other technologies that you can actually go for web applications. Uh, but this is like uh, pretty good for um, these things. Web development is basically a small portion. I wouldn't say small, but again, now there are like a lot of other competitions. But if you guys are gonna go for these ones, uh, this will be really cool. And some of the famous um, uh, Python lang uh, Python libraries are NumPy, which a lot of AI engineers will use it. You generally put it on your resume if you're gonna apply for any AI jobs. And um, there is also TensorFlow libraries and a lot of other libraries that you can uh, find it related to AI. So if you're gonna go into AI, IoT, I would suggest that you choose Python. So that's Python, then C Sharp. Uh, C Sharp is my favorite, this is from Microsoft. And um, the other language which is equal to C Sharp is VB. So if you're gonna go into Microsoft ecosystem of creating software, uh, you generally have two choices. One is either uh, C Sharp or the other one is like uh, VB. And um, so the choice is basically, um, I prefer C Sharp and uh, there, are, there are still programs running on VB as well. Uh, but generally C Sharp is like much bigger a community and much bigger ecosystem of jobs compared to VB. Uh, but there are still a lot of legacy applications running on VB. So, but I prefer C Sharp. So there is a certification available for this one. It's called uh, MCST. Microsoft Certified Solution Developer. Uh, it's not necessary that you need to do it. Most companies don't really ask for it, uh, but it's it's something that you can have it uh, to prove your skill set. So it's not that easy to get MCSTs, so um, it's worthwhile. And again, uh, with C Sharp, you can have lots and lots of utilities, like 85% of the uh, operating systems, like in personal computers and, um, and really decent size of uh, server uh, operating systems are running Microsoft systems. So Windows 10 from Windows 7, 10 and 11, uh, you will find most of the uh, machines will be running Windows. And the C Sharp will let you build desktop applications uh, much faster. Most of the desktop applications that you will see uh, will be running using, will be built using uh, C Sharp. Uh, they use a technology called WPF. It's a front end technology. It's called Windows Presentation Foundation. And this helps you build um, desktop applications much faster. Uh, you can use C Sharp or VB. So you can go both ways. And what are the other things that you can do? There is Windows 10 IoT Core. Uh, with that one, you can write IoT applications. Generally, if, 
Microsoft ecosystems are pretty safe, I would say, like because generally, you know, you can have a wide variety of things that you can try uh, and learn and uh, get jobs around it. Um, then you can have Xamarin. So if you're going to go for cross-platform uh, mobile applications, mobile apps, this is similar to um, Flutter React Native. This is on the Microsoft side. And um, pretty much all your Windows applications. And then wherever .NET Framework runs, you can actually run C Sharp applications. So now I think .NET Framework is supported on uh, Linux, but I'm not sure about Macintosh. But if it does, then you can build one software and you can run it on multiple operating systems as well. And um, apart from that, um, you can um, get into um, uh, write some web applications using ASP.NET. So this will be ASP.NET. And um, you can actually do uh, a lot of customization and you can use your C-sharp code along with um, PowerShell scripting as well, like uh, that's a scripting language within Microsoft. Uh, so you can use that and you can run those uh, C-sharp programs uh, crisscross. So that will be a really cool one as well. And uh, enterprise applications, many enterprise applications for companies are built using C Sharp as well. That's one of the popular ones, just because it is uh, it is um, uh, Microsoft supported. And uh, so what you get is basically you get uh, VS, you use VS Code or uh, Visual Studio. They are number one IDE, I would say. Um, IDE stands for uh, Integrated Developer Environment, which lets you develop softwares. So the icon that you see here in the bottom, it's basically Visual Studio. So each of these programming language, they give you um, one of those IDEs that you can use. There is plenty of other options as well. Uh, for example, Java will give you Eclipse. And um, if you're going for, uh, let's say, Unreal development or something, uh, you can use some IDE. I haven't used Unreal in my <laughs> real life. And Python, um, you can use um, Notepad++ or Wrangler or some of those ones. Um, yeah, so let's go for the next ones. Ruby. Ruby is pretty popular those days. Uh, people use this for uh, web development, scripting automation, and uh, data processing, um, I, uh, ITO, sorry, um, ELTs work, ETL works. So that sort of stuff people use uh, Rubies for. And um, then we have JavaScript. JavaScript is pretty huge these days, and uh, you can literally do a lot of cool things with this one. Um, so with the JavaScript, we use JavaScript in our companies, uh, Node.js, for backend and uh, for REST APIs. And um, you can use it on IoT applications as well. And uh, you can use it on GIS applications as well. You can build uh, even desktop application using uh, Electron, I think, Electron.js. And then you can build uh, mobile applications using uh, uh, the JS based frameworks as well. Um, yeah, so that's like uh, JavaScript is pretty huge next year and a lot of other frameworks that's available. Uh, with that one, you can actually build uh, quite robust uh, web application, both front and back end, uh, mobile applications, mobile friendly and progressive web apps and uh, GAs applications and um, yeah, back end services. A lot of things you can do with, uh, with uh, JavaScript. And uh, next one is PHP. Uh, this is the sort of like the very first language I studied um, back in the days. It's the very first programming language I studied. Uh, PHP is really good even these days. Uh, if you look at uh, any WordPress website, that means anything uh, which is having an information website, people use WordPress because they are pretty good with SEO compared to anything else even today. Um, so they're pretty, pretty good with SEO and you can get lots and lots of developers and uh, getting started with WordPress, you can do it without um, uh, even um, even the multiple, uh, any programming language experience. And there are other uh, CMS that you can get as well. Like one is WordPress. The other one is like um, a Drupal. 
and I forgot few of them as well. So there is like plenty of other CMS that you can get as well. And the other big area WordPress is huge is like e-commerce. So if you guys looking at any shopping cart online, apart from Shopify or Wix or some of these guys, uh, most of these things will be using uh, Open Cart or Magento, Presto Shop, Zen Shop, and you can name it. It's like a whole bunch of other e-commerce sites will be built using um, uh, using PHP as a core technology. And then there will be like plenty of other frameworks that's available as well, which are very famous, like Code Igniter, Y, Symphony, Cake. So you get like a whole bunch of other things as well. And you get, uh, you can install web servers such as VAMP, LAMP, XAMP to run uh, PHP based websites. And um, so learning PHP is like a lot easier. So the core PHP is like straightforward. You can start programming in just uh, uh, one hour or something like that. You can build some web pages. Uh, frameworks such as uh, MVC uh, will may take a bit of a time uh, to understand it. Uh, the model view controller basis is a bit hard for beginners to understand. But once you understand it, you can rapidly build websites and uh, you can use themes and templates and stuff like that. Uh, this will be really engaging and useful. Um, so yeah, if you guys are actually go into uh, programming um, e-commerce websites and things like that, I would suggest um, PHP will still be a good one, but still it's a very old programming language, uh, still a useful one. So Perl, so it's, um, it's a purpose language. It's, uh, it's basically used for uh, text processing, um, like we used for uh, OCD uh, based uh, um, text processing for PDF creations and things like that. Um, so yeah, Perl scripts are basically used in quite a lot of small uh, uh, microservice and small systems and things like that to do a specific function. There are libraries that's available for text processing, ETL works and things like that, uh, which makes it really cool one. So data analyst and uh, BA works and data warehousing and those sort of stuff. And um, the other languages that we can also look into is like uh, Swift, which will be similar to C Sharp and Java. So the syntax, like uh, for me to try Swift, is like was very easy because uh, since I'm a C Sharp developer, it, it find I find it very easily. And if you want to build iOS native applications for iPhones, Androids, sorry, iPhones and iPads and Macintosh and stuff, uh, Swift is basically your go-to go language. And uh, Kotlin. So if you want to build um, native mobile applications for Android, then Kotlin and Java is your choice. And uh, React Native. With React Native, you can build mobile applications for both Android and iOS. And um, you can also build for desktops as well. And Flutter. Sim similar to React. Um, yeah, so basically they both are equals. Uh, hybrid applications you can build for both mobile application and for desktop. And uh, apart from that, there is like uh, other other languages such as C as well. Uh, so if you're going to use IoT uh, such as Arduinos, if you heard of Arduinos, then uh, I would suggest C because Arduino runs on C C programming. So if you're building some prototypes in IoT, most cases you'll be using C. Uh, but I would recommend go for Raspberry Pi instead of Arduino. We will look into that in a separate topic, like the difference between Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. Um, but uh, that's about it, guys. So um, choose the language that you think that it's going to be useful for you and what field that you're going to work on. And based on that, upskill yourself. Okay, we'll catch up in another video and uh, where we will talk like how to learn a programming language effectively. Uh, because a lot of people tend to learn it in such a way that they don't really have a good foundation. Uh, I did that mistake when I was in school days, so later I have to de-learn and then learn it again. So we will see like how to effectively learn a programming language. Okay, we'll catch up again in another video guys and thank you so much for all the love and support. Uh, please uh, share with your friends and then subscribe to the channel. Thank you.